Aaron, in the western tropical Atlantic has just become our first hurricane of the 2025 season. Happened earlier this morning at approximately 9.30 local time here in Central Florida. Reconnaissance aircraft circling the storm, collecting their data upon several different passes, managed to collect and observe winds at around 65 knots, 74 miles an hour sustained, making this a Category 1 hurricane. It came out during the 11 a.m. advisory per National Hurricane Center, and I have all the latest for you in terms of what Aaron is going to look like over the next 24, 48, 72 hours as we begin to tread into that rapid intensification phase, I do think we're starting to build the momentum there. And on top of that, some of the key features I'm watching in our big picture pattern and what's possibly coming down the pike right behind Aaron. So thank you so much for taking some time out of your Friday. Welcome back to the Weather Center. If you've just recently stumbled upon our community, it would mean the world to all of us. If you kindly consider hitting that subscribe button, joining the community alongside all of us as we prepare to rock fully into the peak of the 2025 hurricane season, give that like button a little nudge. Let's nudge the heck out of that like button. We got to get this information out there. Share this content if you could, please. Please and drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know where you're tuning in from, especially if you reside somewhere in the Lesser Antilles, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, the Turks and Caicos, or the Bahamas. Those are our primary areas we're going to be watching over the next three to five days, eventually turning our attention to the Mid-Atlantic and Bermuda. And obviously, wherever it is you're watching from, regardless, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to start a conversation. So if you wanted to drop me a comment, it'd be awesome to chat with you. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Here is National Hurricane Center's homepage, working left to right. As always, Invest 98L is a dead stick. This system managed to pick up a little bit of forward progress, tried to develop some thunderstorms late last night and early this morning during that diurnal maximum phase. It did look like we managed to cling on to our mid-level circulation, but we didn't quite stack it down into the low levels. And as a result, National Hurricane Center dropped chances from 50 all the way down to 20 as of 8 a.m. this morning. And now at 2 o'clock, you can see where the yellow X is positioned. We're beginning to move into southernmost Texas, upping our heavy rainfall possibilities down through the southern half of Texas. But we no longer have a chance or a threat that this becomes anything more than an invest. We're going to be watching those heavy rainfall totals over the next 12 to 18 hours as this system continues to meander further inland. And hopefully, that's all there is for that. Texas and Louisiana, we're not tracking any imminent threats for you all. I mention that because obviously there's been a lot of comments, things in the background I want to address. Outside of 98L, there is nothing on the immediate horizon that I'm tracking. There's still stuff down the road I'm naturally going to keep my eyes on, but nothing on the immediate horizon for you all. So rest assured, we've got your back, and everything is kosher for now. Now, let's get you the latest on Hurricane Aaron. This is the 2 o'clock advisory 17A. Max sustained winds in the center of circulation still coming in at 75 miles an hour. I do anticipate throughout the evening and very early morning hours of your Saturday, these are quickly going to go up and we're also noticing the central pressure is beginning to take a bit of a nosedive. Last couple of observed runs, we saw 998, 997 millibars in the center with the 2 o'clock update. We are down to anywhere between 991 to 993. So we're already starting to dip down into to those lower pressures, which means the winds are eventually going to follow. You can see the forecast cone has shrunk. We still have our tropical storm watches in effect for our northernmost leeward islands. That's going to remain in place, and we will likely see a bit of an expansion of that, not only just a tad further south, but also off towards the west to include the U.S. British Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. We're starting to get a little bit more symmetry with this system. We're getting away from that northwesterly wind shear or northeasterly wind shear, and as a result, it is starting to bundle up the convection closer to the center, and you can see our wind core, the strongest winds, will remain to the north of your area, but we cannot rule out very intense rain bands and heavy squall conditions, producing tropical storm winds and heavier rainfall as the system works its way through your area this weekend, hopefully beginning to make that fateful turn very late on Sunday into Monday morning away from the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. Now here's a quick glance at the Gulf. You can see 98L front and center rapidly 
moving off towards the north northwest there goes that flare up of convection and i do think what ended up happening here is if we pause the loop i'll go ahead and scroll on down for you all we pause the loop at the very beginning when our convection first flared up and you can kind of make a case that our mid-level spin was somewhere right in through there where that first puff up of our thunderstorms and cumulonimbus towers really ignited during the very early morning hours of today friday morning but then as we started to see more of that convection blossom towards the north if you look very closely in the cloud signature it seems as if our mid-level circulation has now jumped towards the north and is now preparing to make what we could call a landfall into the southeastern tip of Texas, the upper northeast coastline of Mexico. And you can already see the rain field with this is working its way into central and eastern Texas with a little bit of the effects making it as far down as central coastal Texas, especially along the lee of the higher terrain features that kind of encapsulate the east coastline of Mexico down through those areas. This feature is going to continue to diminish but we're going to watch what this does as it moves further inland because regardless of the development or the organization of this feature this is a huge plume of moisture an increase in our relative humidity and precipitable water totals we all saw what happened with tropical storm barry so we're not going to take our eyes off of just this little old invest and i know it may seem a little weird we're starting with this i want to cover imminent and immediate impacts first before we transition out further to the east and now let's get you over to hurricane Aaron, and you can see this this feature definitely looks very different than when we met during our live stream yesterday. I got to admit, beginning to think I'm a little bit of a jinx because every time I make a confident call, Mother Nature decides they're going to throw the wool over my eyes and pull the rug out from underneath me. I had mentioned we could very well see a hurricane by the 11 o'clock advisory yesterday, and then all of a sudden our convection collapsed. And if you look very closely here on our true color visible satellite shot earlier on in the loop, as we started to develop that hurricane intensity, it did look like some of that north side dry air created a bit of an interior channel towards that center of circulation. You can see very briefly in the very beginning there, I'll pause the loop so you all can get a closer look with me right about there. Nice little dry air channel managed to work its way into the center that helped really diminish that core convection late last night, early this morning. But I think what also happened was a simple diurnal cycling of these thunderstorms that eventually led to the co-locating, the aligning of our low and mid-level circulations. And that's why we have started to see this storm build a lot more symmetry. And we're starting to see that central pressure go down and the winds are likely to go up at the five o'clock advisory 8, 11, and so on and so forth as we hit that rapid intensification phase. Looking at your microwave imagery, we don't have a fully closed off eye wall core just yet. We probably are starting to see more of that core convection wrapping around, but you can even on the microwave imagery kind of see where that dry air continues to try to penetrate the center of the storm. There is your core eye wall beginning to establish itself on the south, eastern, and northern sides of it. We're still waiting for the west and northwestern quadrants to really close off, but if I cycle us back to the true color and switch us to your infrared it does seem like we are finally starting to close that center off a little bit more hastily you can kind of see those really cold cloud tops here starting to wrap around on the northwest side eventually going to seal off that dry air intrusion and then we are off to the races so while we may not hit rapid intensification for the next six to eight hours we will see intensifying strengthening of Hurricane Aaron through the overnight hours of tonight, but especially tomorrow and through the majority of the weekend, that is when things are really going to ramp up. If you take a look at your mean layer steering here, we'll go ahead and switch over to the full screen so you can get the full effect of this. We're looking at our 5,000 foot 850 millibar flow stacked all the way up to 400 millibars just below our mid-latitude jet stream level. So this is a huge slice of the atmosphere if you were to think about it three-dimensionally. Right now, we're starting to see a change in our winds. Notice a little bit of that diffluent flow creating a pocket of lower pressure to the northwest of where Aaron is currently located. That's your path of least resistance. That's where the system is going to track. So we still have another two to three days ahead of us of it moving mainly west northwest. There is a bit of a break beginning to form up between our two anticyclones here. There's a bit of anticyclonic spin there. Let me use a better pen so you all can actually see it. A little bit of an anticyclone there and a more stronger one over the central west Atlantic. It's this next jet max and 
upper trough that's going to be racing across the upper United States, the eastern half of Canada, that's going to help expedite how much we can get this to split in half, opening the path of least resistance all the way, hopefully thread the needle between Bermuda and the east coast of the United States. That's been the forecast we've been holding on to for several days now. We're almost there to where that corridor will open up and allow this feature to escape, hopefully not wandering further off towards the west as the icon model has been showing. Now, I will say, the icon is an outlier. There's a lot of folks leaning in on the icon right now to, dare I say, fit the agenda with these westward shifts. If you didn't catch the live stream yesterday, I want to emphasize, when you see westward shift, keep in mind you're either being baited or they're going to honestly explain to you that these westward, quote, shifts are more of little nudges back and forth because we have an evolving steering pattern. And remember, look back at my videos a week or a week and a half ago when we first started to track the ensemble signal with this. I would mentioned the background pattern is not going to be the issue here. It's going to be the little nuances in the pattern, your shortwave perturbations, little tinier features embedded within the big picture weather fi weather phenomena like the jet, the long wave pattern where your highs and lows are. Those features are going to remain steady minus a couple of oscillating factors. It's going to be the little details, the little ones we have to wait until almost the last second to split hairs with that will determine where this feature goes. And that's why once you get beyond 70 west longitude and you begin to lift up in latitude, you still see huge dispersion in our ensembles. They can go wide left or wide right, and I don't quite think we're going to see those close up until, again, 12 to 18, maybe 24 hours before really making that recurve out of there. Now, on top of that, before I show you the ensembles, I am going to cautiously and optimistically take back what I'd mentioned about us possibly going on a break. It does seem like our 15-day control ensemble as well as the mean of all of your Euro Ensemble members are indicating the passage of another Kelvin wave having originated somewhere near the maritime continents and is beginning to work its way through the pattern over the equatorial Pacific. If you look at our latest velocity anomaly here, there's your standing wave. So right at about August 23rd to August 25th, as I'd mentioned in a couple of previous updates, kind of tongue in cheek moment, I'm not trying to shoot myself in the foot here. I'd mentioned we might be going on a bit of a shutdown for at least two weeks into the first seven to 10 days of September. And then this guy popped up a little bit of an increase in our favorable flow over Africa as it meanders across the western central Atlantic into the greater tropics, the deep tropics, reinvigorating some of our tropical waves. You can see that here as well when we switch over to the CFS looking long range at the actual unfolded map of the globe instead of looking at your Havmaler time phase chart going up and down now we're just kind of cutting the globe in half and laying it out flat like a map on a desk and you can see as we get towards the back end of August we go from a suppressed phase right back into a bit of a favorable setup from August 22nd through the 28th if you look down over here where Aaron is currently observed we have large amounts of subsidence already beginning to pop up over the eastern tropical Pacific the Caribbean the Gulf moving across the Atlantic. Early on, if you notice your velocity anomalies here from the 15th to the 21st, we're starting to see a bit of a recession in them, and then they back build. We see a bit of a pulling away from the maritime continents, back over Africa, the Middle East, and the Western Indian Ocean. Same thing with September. If you look down here, we're still carrying that signal, extending it back over the Africa Peninsula where it matters most, and that's when I do think we're going to start to hightail it once again in terms of activity. You switch over to your tropical probabilities, and there goes Aaron's signature threading the needle, like I said, between Bermuda and the mid-Atlantic coast of the United States, and then in hot pursuit, which I really do think if these tropical waves can take advantage just like Aaron did and exploit the favorable setup towards the backside of this month, both of these tropical waves are going to be ones to watch, especially as you watch these signals propagate westward. You have one signal moving right through portions of Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, Haiti, the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos, very familiar area, getting dangerously close to Jamaica and Cuba before possibly 
possibly. We're getting way out in the run there, so I'm going to be very cautious in what I say, but this does seem to be a vibrant signal, and the reason I want us to watch this is if you look at our latest NAO, North Atlantic Oscillation Forecast, we've been positive for the first half of August. That's what's resulted in these features spinning up a little bit later than expected, spinning up and then eventually recurving out because we don't have as dominant of upper level features, a dominant upper level pattern as we would typically see during a negative NAO phase. On top of that, what tends to happen in the negative phase is you weaken your Atlantic surface high pressure and replace it with very dominant upper level subtropical ridging which as a result increases, or I should say decreases, the flow of your jet stream, slowing things down. And as a result, you get these tropical waves that can slowly but steadily further progress westward. Then to caveat that, because we've weakened our Atlantic high pressure, we tend to split the difference and you get a bit of a bubble over the southwest Atlantic and then one back up closer to Europe. And as a result, if you don't get that very early escape like we saw in 2023, a lot of an El Nino influence on that one, then you're going to have problems with things trying to push into the Caribbean. You can definitely see that once we come over to our ensembles. These are your 12Z Euro active cyclone ensembles, so you can track the individual signals. So there goes Aaron. I want to stop it at about the five-day mark, and I want you to see just how much our ensembles are still fanning out. So while there's confidence... There still isn't a high amount of confidence. We're like confident, you know, you're, okay, yeah, you know, we're going to be seeing a lift, but it could be here, it could be there. We're not locked into it. It's definitely going to be here just yet. So Bermuda, the Mid-Atlantic, and all of our friends in the upper Greater Antilles and the Bahamas down to the Turks and Cake Islands, we got to pay attention. And then as you go just outside of the seven-day window, there goes our next signal beginning to bubble up, coming to a slow simmer, moving across the Atlantic. Some of them, like I just mentioned, with that negative NAO, you either get some quick escaping fish storms that never make it past 60 West, or if you look at another bulk of our ensemble members, these ones do try to make a push through the Lesser Antilles and ride the upper border of the Caribbean, impacting many of our Greater Antilles. The GFS does a fantastic job of showing this as well. I'm not going to show the operational runs. If you're a tropical aficionado, which I'm sure a lot of you watching are, you'll know it's been spawning in second and third waves behind Aaron. You'll know exactly what they're doing. But the GEFS shows a very, very healthy signal, generally tracking towards the west-northwest that we'll have to pay attention to. And you can see those tropical waves here when we switch over to your wave tracking hemispheric outlook. There goes Aaron right here. We have another tropical wave getting ready to come off, another one, and then a few other signatures back behind that as we continue this fairly active phase of August. And it looks like we may just be extending that. We're going to watch the trends, but this is starting to uptick into a more enhanced phase once again, even beyond the 25th of August, despite what earlier iterations of that velocity anomaly forecast showed us. And that's that. We're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you all so much for your continued support. It's been great getting to chat with you all. I can't wait to host another live stream. It'll probably be this upcoming Monday. This weekend, I'm going to try to take a step back, recollect myself since things are slowing down in the home front, as well as at work, try to get myself back in the swing of things. And we'll talk to you again very soon. But I hope you've had a phenomenal week, and I hope this weekend treats you beautifully. If you reside in the Leeward Islands, the U.S., British Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico, we're watching very closely. And if anything, big does pop off you can count on me to come at you here on the youtube channel and other social media platforms to get you the information you need in a timely accurate and reliable manner as always but until next time folks you know the drill this is weather center nazario signing out